Welcome everyone to an APH virtual Excel camp early elementary this week and we are on ocean exploration. We are so glad to have you with us today. Glad to see you in here. You're welcome to tell us in the chat who you are and where you're from. You are in the right place if you are looking for the APH virtual Excel camp for early elementary and this week is ocean exploration. Your instructors today are Leslie McNeil, a teacher of students with visual impairments. Say hi, Leslie. Hi, everyone. So happy to have you here today. And Jessica Kaminsky, another teacher of students with visual impairments. Hi, Jessica. Hey, everybody. Glad you could join us. And they are from Georgia. Now, we had one person who actually sent us photos of their boat to sail away. Ranger is the camper who made a boat out of a piece of pool noodle and he stuck a toothpick in it and then used a cupcake liner as his sail and he floated it in his bathroom. How cool is that? Thank you for sharing with us, Ranger. Very, very cool. Welcome, Giselle. I forgot to sh stop sharing again. There you go. You guys get to see wolves again. Oops. Okay. Welcome, Giselle. Welcome, Alicia. Glad to have you with us. Welcome, welcome. And I am going to turn it over to your instructors to get us going. You ready? All right, guys. Oh, there you go. Are we ready for um, our ocean exploration today? We're going to sail away. Or no, excuse me. We're going on a, on a beach trip today. So a little bit about what we're going to do today. We did the introduction. So okay, I oh. think Jessica froze. So I will go ahead and pick up for her. Our schedule for today is we are going to read, if you ever want to bring a piano to the beach, don't. We're going to go over and, a little bit of our schedule. And then we're going to have a discussion about what to bring to the beach. And then we'll have a story about the beach. Ms. Jessica, are you back? I think so. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. So then we'll talk about going, if you went sailing, uh, then Miss Leslie will read you a story a day at the beach. And then we're going to discuss our upcoming extension activity for today, the sand and the sea. We'll sing our ocean song and then we'll take any questions that you may have and talk about um, our activity that we have planned for Friday. So we'll start off with our lovely story. If you ever want to bring a piano to the beach, don't. And this was written by Elise Parsley. If you ever want to bring a piano to the beach, don't. And in this picture, you will see a little girl and she is playing the piano and it looks like she has on her swimsuit and an inner tube. And on the floor beside her are, it looks like to be her brother and baby sister, both in bathing suits and there's some beach toys and other toys lying around on the floor. Then we see in the next picture, there's a mom and she is bending down and she is talking to the brother and the sister and they have things on the floor getting ready for the beach. It looks like sunscreen, a toy boat, goggles, a frisbee, a bucket and a ball. And a little um, in the corner we see the little girl and she still has on her bathing suit inner tube and she's pulling her piano across the floor. If your mom says to get ready to play at the beach, she means with a boat or a frisbee or a shovel. She's not talking about the piano. Jessica. and a knife and a sword yes okay you fro we thought you froze sorry 
Oh. You did. We now see the picture. (laughs) And we see the little girl standing in front of the piano. If you roll the piano out, if you roll out the piano anyway, she'll tell you, you better not lose it. You'll tell her that it's okay. You will hold it tight to your piano and keep it neat and clean. And you even promise to push it to the beat yourself. Cross your heart. Now we see the little girl. She's trying to push the piano to the beach. The mom is pushing the baby sister in a stroller. And she's pulling the baby brother in a wagon with all their toys. And the little girl is trying her hardest to push the piano. And finally, she puts the piano in the wagon with her baby brother. But on the way, your arms will get heavy. Then your legs will get draggy. And you will find the perfect way to move the piano along. Which I don't know if putting your piano in your baby brother's wagon is a good way. When you feel rested, you will push again. So she's back to pushing the piano. It looks like the mom told her to take it off the the wagon and is making her push it the rest of the way. The mom does not look very happy. Then there's a picture of them at the beach. The little girl is playing the piano and and the sand and you can see the ocean behind her. And it looks like her brother and sister are dancing and smiling along. Once you're at the beach, you'll need to make sure the piano still works. In this next picture, you see the mom and the brother and the sister sitting on a picnic blanket eating sandwiches and it looks like drinking some juice boxes. And the little girl is sitting on top of her piano and she is eating a sandwich. And above her are all the seagulls. Finally, you'll stop for lunch break. The seagulls will want to share your egg and cheese sandwich. In this picture, we see a very unhappy girl sitting on top of her piano while the seagulls are flying down and taking her sandwich right out of her hand and making a big mess on her piano. In this next picture, you see her, she's very unhappy. The seagulls have made such a big mess on her piano. And it says, this you know is not good for the piano but you'll know just what to do. And while she's thinking about what she should do to clean her piano, she is pushing it down the dock, which is a a wooden bridge towards the ocean. And her mom and her brother and her sister are still picnicking on the beach. In these pictures, we see her put her piano in the ocean water. And in the next picture, The piano's floating away with a seagull on top of it. You'll splish, you'll splash. The piano will bob up and down, up and down, then up and away. Next, you see she's very far away from the piano. The piano has floated way, way far away and she can't get to it anymore. And there's still a seagull sitting on top of her piano and all her sheet music is blowing away. And it says, and out of reach. In the next picture, she is sitting on the beach and she has her hands over her eyes. It looks like she's crying. Her brother's standing and he looks sad and he has a fishing pole in his hand and her baby sister is also standing beside her brother and they look very sad for their sister. By now, of course, you'll wish you had played with a boat or a frisbee or a shovel at the beach instead of the piano. By now, you'll wish you had played with your baby sister instead of the piano. You'll be so mad, you'll want to just go home. Well, here's what to do if I were you. So now we see her, she's got a fishing pole and she is casting it into the water. That means she is swinging the pole and making the line go of the pole into the water. Borrow your brother's fishing line and cast it far, far out to catch your drifting piano. So it looks like something is caught on the end of her line and she's trying to pull it in 
And then in the bottom picture, she has caught a big seashell. Then when you reel in the line, you might get your piano back or you might get, and in these pictures we see her, she's taken her shell and she's floating it upside down in the water and she has a stick in it like a boat. And then we see another picture of her tossing the shell like a Frisbee. And then in the bottom picture, we see her using her shell as a shovel to dig a hole. And it says a boat or a Frisbee or a shovel. So she's using her seashell for all those things. And then we see in the last pic, the next picture that the sun is setting. It means the sun is going down, so the sky is kind of turning a yellow color. And it looks like they have packed up all their stuff and they put the baby sister in the stroller and mom's got the fishing pole in her hand and baby brother's in his wagon with the cooler and the snacks. And the little girl is inside a big hole she's dug with her seashell. And it says, yeah, if you ever want to bring a piano to the beach, don't. You might lose it. And so it shows, the next picture shows the mom and her brother and sister and the little girl walking home. The mom is pushing the baby sister in a stroller and pulling the baby brother in a wagon. And the little girl is walking home with her great big seashell. And it says, but you never know what you might find. And that is the end of that one. It's a pretty cool story. I don't think I ever thought to take a piano to the beach, Miss Jessica. Um, I've taken a lot of things to the beach, but a piano has never been one of them. They're quite heavy. I wonder if any of our friends have taken a piano to a beach. Alicia has her hand raised. Oh, Alicia, have you taken a, a piano to the beach? No, but I have a keyboard. Oh, you have a keyboard. Did you take the keyboard to the beach? No. No. You might get sand in the keys and it would stop working. Ranger says he has not. Nathaniel says, I haven't taken a piano to the beach. Sydney says no. Emmanuel, have you taken a piano to the beach? Try holding down the space bar. Okay, well try typing it in the chat with mom or dad's help. Maeve? Have you brought a piano, Maeve? No, I haven't brought anything. No piano? Because guess what? What? I know what would happen. Really. What would happen? If you took like a, like a piano to the beach, Guess what? And you put it in the water and play it with like. <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely sink if you put it in the water. Well, I wonder if y'all know I am getting ready on a beach trip and I have my, I have a plastic beach bag. It's kind of hard to see, but all my beach bags are either plastic or they're mesh so that if they get wet, I can easily clean them. And so I need to pack some things in my beach bag. Does anybody have any ideas of what I should put in here? You still have three hands raised. Let's see, oh, Alicia. Well, let's hear from them. You should take to the beach um, a towel to lay down on. Take, you know, um, I have one right here. I think I'll pack it in my bag. Good idea, Alicia. You should um bring umbrella. Oh, uh, I have an umbrella, but I don't think it'll fit in my beach bag. I'll have to pack that separately. You could bring um ball. a beach ball. 
that's definitely a good idea. I, I wonder. Hmm? Oops. Oh, there Isaac says sunscreen. Isaac, that's a good idea. And you know what? I have my sunscreen right here. I'm going to put it in my bag. Ingrid? Are you guys talking about I was upstairs some of the time by accident while you got me on here? When you go to the ocean, what do you bring with you? Ingrid, what do you bring with you when you go? I don't know. You don't know what you would bring? Okay, well, you had lots of people give us some suggestions. Ranger oh. said a bucket and a shovel. I have a cool claw shovel I think I'm going to bring with me to the beach. Nathaniel oh. said a fishing pole. That won't fit in my bag, but I can definitely bring it to the beach. That way, if I lose my piano, I can try to catch it. Risa, what would you bring? Uh, I bring a football. A football. I didn't even think about that. That's a great idea. Okay. As Sydney said, goggles. Goggles. That's a great idea. Um, usually I don't wear goggles at the beach, but I totally bring my sunglasses to the beach. I have to wear my sunglasses at the beach. And Ranger said my number one thing, which is snacks. Oh, I've got that. I like a good granola bar to take with me. All right, guys, I've made a little list and I'm going to share it with you so you can see what I had thought about. And y'all had added some great ideas to this, too. And I love how this is not letting me open it up. There we go. Awesome. Emmanuel said a shovel. And Alicia said drinks. Gotta oh. stay hydrated when you're at the beach. You are right. So um, I have my water. And usually I bring a first aid kit because you never know what's going to happen. You may step on a sharp shell or maybe get stung by a jellyfish. So it's always good to have a first aid kit. Um, I have sunscreen. And I bring lots of sunscreen because you're supposed to reapply that every hour and a half. Ingrid and then, said make sure you wear your swimsuit. You're right. I do have a swimsuit here. So I'm going to make sure I have my swimsuit. And we never go anywhere without a rubber duck because my kids love to um, float rubber ducks in boats in the tidal pools at the beach. Don't know if you've ever done that, but it's a fun thing to do. And other sand toys you can bring are like sifters. We had somebody say buckets and shovels, all fun things to play at the beach. Uh, we, someone told us to bring a beach umbrella. We have that on our list. So this is just a cool little quick list. Um, and for some of those of you who are practicing braille, this list will be attached. If y'all want to practice braille in some of these words, It'll be an awesome way to get up your skills and help your mom and dad out when you're getting ready to go to the beach. You can be ready to go. So Leslie, are you ready to read our next story? Yes, or uh, were we gonna ask about sailboats? Which one's next? You tell me. Oh, it's after the story. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Will you get ready when I'll tell you Nathaniel says they bring 70 plus sunscreen because his mom burns. Oh, that is such a smart idea. Um, I, our family uses 70 or we use 100 because we don't like to get burned. And Ingrid reads Braille. Very cool. Oh, Ingrid, if you read Braille, that is awesome. Do y'all see my screen? We just see you. Okay, let me fix that. 
or the photo of you. Ah, got it. I have to wait for it to say three, two, one. Now? Not yet. Oh, man. Emmanuel will bring a boat to the ocean. Maybe a boat like the one Ranger made. That would Those be would be fun to float in the tidal pools. There you go. It's working on it, Leslie. All right. See the beach. So now we're going to uh, read a story about the beach. And on this one, there is some sound effects. So um, we're going to have to listen to see if we can hear those. Okay, so it says the beach, written and illustrated by Bonnie Lee. On the screen, we see a sun up in the sky and the clouds, and then we see parts of the ocean and sand. At the beach, I have fun. And on this picture, we see the sun, a cloud, a palm tree, in the sand and the ocean. It says, it says, I play in the sand. Let's listen and see if we can hear the sand. And it's a little girl digging in the sand with a palm tree. And you see the ocean and the sky with the sun and the cloud in it. Let's see if we can hear it. I hope you heard her playing in the sand or the sand, the sound of sand. And then we have, I listen to the waves. And she's sitting on the beach in her bathing suit. She's got her hand by her ear because she's listening to the sound of the waves. And we see the ocean, the palm tree, and the sand, and the in the sky you see a sun and the clouds. So let's listen. you were able to hear those waves definitely good all right our next our next page says i splash in water and so the little girl is in the water and she has got her inner tube and she's in her bathing suit and she is playing in the the ocean or the water you see the beach uh to the right and up in the sky you see the sun so let's listen for the water the sound of the water All right, I throw a Frisbee and she's throwing a Frisbee. So you see a purple Frisbee coming on the screen and you see the beach sand and you just see her hands. So it looks like she just let it go and you see the water in the background and the sun's up in the sky. So let's listen for the Frisbee. We didn't say take the Frisbee to the beach, did we? That's another toy we could have brought. All right, our next one says, I hear seagulls. And so we see two seagulls on the sand. In the back, you see the water. Up in the sky, you see more seagulls and the sun. So let's listen to the seagulls. Some of us, especially me, like to take a nap. So it says, I take a nap. And so the little girl is laid on her beach blanket, taking a nap. And there's some Z's coming away from her head, letting us know that she's asleep. And out in the distance, you can see the ocean and see the sun in the sky. So let's listen to her as she takes a nap. All right. 
pause that one. I hope you heard laughing on that one. It says, I laugh with friends. And so there she is with her friend. It looks to be a boy and he's got on his bathing suit. They're on the sand and they are high-fiving each other. And in the distance, you see the water and the sun. And I'm sure you, I'm hoping you heard the laughs with friends. And the last page says, I love to go to the beach. And it says the beach and it has pictures of where they were at the beach. And the pictures, you see the sand and the palm tree and the water and the sun and the sky and the cloud. The end. I love to take a nap <laughs> on the beach. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do, especially if I've been reading a good book and then I like to lay it down and take a nap. Me too. I like to take oh. afternoon naps out on the beach. So did anyone, we talked yesterday uh, about the sailboat. Did, did anyone else make a sailboat that they didn't tell us about yesterday? You have two people that have raised their hands, but I think it might have been possibly about the story. That's fine. We'll take those two. Natatya? Natati? I'm taking a guess. N-A-A-T-A-T-I. -A -A there you go. <laughs> You probably have your speakers too loud, which is why it's causing that. Okay, I muted you for right now because it's a little much for us. Emmanuel? You can talk now, Emmanuel, and give it a try again. Still having some problems there. Emmanuel on the chat said that he would bring a boat to the ah, beach. How about Natalie? Natalie? Try holding down your space bar. No, it's tricky. Giselle? Oh. Hi. I would just bring a swimming suit and um, something cold for I don't feel hot. <laughs> That's a great idea. Giselle, did you, go ahead. I was going to say, Giselle, did you get a chance to make a sailboat yet? Yes, I did. Oh, what did you use? I used paper and a plastic lid. And did your sailboat sail? Yes. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Alicia? Just to bring a hat to the beach. A hat? Mm hmm That is a good idea. I didn't even remember to put a hat on my list. I'm going to have to change my list. And some bubbles. Oh, definitely have to have bubbles. Bubbles are fun to blow on the beach, especially when they have the light breeze going because then they go everywhere. Natalie says that she's going to make a boat, going to make a sailboat from a milk carton and also a cereal bowl. Oh, you'll have to let us know how those work. Sounds like fun. Sydney says they like to bring uh, books to the beach too. 
Oh, and it looks like Ingrid also takes naps. Alicia? But also, I didn't um, make a boat. Not yet. I haven't made a boat yet. That's okay. That's fine because we have some more activities for you guys to do if making a boat wasn't your thing. We have some other things we can do. And we are going to let Miss Leslie, and if anybody, does anyone have anything else they need to tell us before we let Miss Leslie share our next book? Oh, Ingrid has not gone to the beach. Ingrid, you know what? Maybe you will one day. I'm working over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the other book. There we go. Finally got it to go down. All right. So this story is a day at the beach. It says a day... Oh, excuse me, at the beach, I can hear the waves and animals, smell the salty, salty water, feel the hot sand and sunshine, and touch different sea creatures. And the picture has a picture of the beach, and to the left of the picture is the ocean or the waves coming in to meet the beach. And in the distance, we see a patch of green. Oh, goodness. That's not good. Sorry. I started at the end of the book, guys. So let's start at the beginning of the book. A Day at the Peach, the, uh, a Day at the Beach by Lindsay Lanier. And it is a beautiful picture of the ocean meeting the sand. In the distance, you see palm trees. And up in the sky, it's a nice blue sky with the white clouds. When I go to the beach, I can feel the rough sand in between my toes. I love the way that the sand fills in, in between my toes at the beach. And the picture is a picture of the beach, of the sand at the beach. When I go to the beach, I feel pretty seashells. And then the picture is a bunch of different shells of all different shapes and colors. And in the distance, you see the ocean. When I go to the beach, I swim in the cool salt water, salty water, and listen to the waves crash. And in this picture, you see the waves uh, rolling up. When I go to the beach, I hear fe feathery seagulls flying in the sky. In this picture, we got a picture of a seagull with his feet stretched out and his wings are way back. It looks like he's coming in for a landing. He is white and on the tips of his wings he has black. When I go to the beach I feel scaly fish swimming in the ocean and this is a picture of a fish, an orange fish. When I go to the beach Sometimes I find starfish and sand dollars. And in the picture, we have starfish and sand dollars. At the beach, I can hear the waves and animals, smell the salt, salty water, feel the hot sand and sunshine, and touch different sea creatures. And in the picture, it has a picture of the ocean, of the water meeting the sand. And then in the distance is the green. The end. Has anyone ever touched a sea creature while you were at the ocean? Or has an animal touched you? I know I've been stung by a jellyfish before. Natat Natati? Try holding your space bar down. What is sand? Um, sand dollar? Sand Maybe. dollars. It could be sand dollars. Um, Ingrid, are you asking us about sand dollars, honey? 
think she might want them described. Ah. Well, there's two types. Sand dollars, when they're alive, they are found in the water and usually you find them with your feet. You touch them with your feet because they lay on the sand and they feel very prickly. They are round and in the middle of them, they have a shape that's kind of like a raised star. Um, but they're, like I said, they're very prickly when they're alive. But when they wash up on the shore, they lose all their prickles and then they're very, very smooth and they're flat and they're in a round dish shape. And when they're alive, they're called a sea urchin. Can you describe how big or small they are? So I found different sizes of them. I've ha found some that are as small as a quarter and I'm sure they could be smaller than a quarter is, but I found some that's and some that were as big as my entire hand. But I'm sure they probably could be um, bigger. Are they solid or do they have holes? So they do have holes in them. Um, on the top, the holes go all the way through. They have, I think it's four small holes. And then they have a fifth hole that is, um, it's not really round, it's oval, but that's their mouth where they take in their food and nutrients. And the little spines that they have all over them, the little spikes, they're what helps them move and bury themselves in the sand. Giselle, Hi. have you ever touched a sand dollar? Touched a sand dollar, but no, I never touched a sand dollar, but one day, a jellyfish bit my father. Ouch. Is he all better now? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't you getting bit. I have never found a, a sand dollar, and I used to live at the beach for 18 years and never found one. We found I've seen them so, in the store, but I have not found one myself. Well, usually we go out about waist deep in the water and we put our feet in the sand. And if you wiggle your toes back and forth just real lightly, you will feel a rough place in the sand and it's a circle. And you just, um, some people pick them up with their toes. Other people reach down and pick them up. But if you find them in the water, it means they're still alive. So you have to leave them there. But if you find one that's already white and it's on the shore and it's smooth, then you can keep it because it's not alive anymore. Uh, we have found some hermit crabs on the beach. So hermit crabs live in different kinds of shells and they are a type of crab. So if you're ever at the beach and your shell starts running away from you, it probably has a little crab inside of it. <laughs> and when you pick it up, they like to hide inside the shell. And then um, when they get comfortable, they come out and it almost looks like a little hand coming out of the shell and running across. It's really cool. So we are going to... Oh. Yes, Ingrid? Is today the last day of camp? Today's the last day that we will meet face to face like this, but we still have an, an activity you'll get sent out tomorrow to do. There are other camps for the rest of the weeks in the next four weeks that you are welcome to join if you think you would be interested. It doesn't cost any money and you can just hop on. Okay, what's next? So we are going to talk about your activity for y'all to do today. And today we have plans for y'all to make some sand dough. Has anybody ever made sand dough or played with kinetic sand or moon sand? 
Oh, I see two people have raised their hands. Manuel says no. Okay. Oh, we have four four kids raised their hand. We must have some people that have. Ranger said yes, he has. Ranger, did you like playing with that sand? The sand dough? Okay, I'll ask Alicia. Alicia, have you played with moon sand? I haven't played with moon sand or any kind of other sand. I played with regular sand and kinetic sand, I think. So the sand you're going to make is a lot like kinetic sand. Um, in the fact that it kind of sticks together so you can make different shapes and stuff out of it. It's like clay a little it bit? It is kind of like clay but with sand. I have some right here that my daughter made. It's hard to see but it is blue and purple because she wanted to dye hers blue and purple. I do see it. It is um, very soft but I can squish it with my hand and I can form it into shapes. And it'll kind of stay for a little, whoop, a little bit. Nicely got that all over my computer. And then she has these little molds that look like little sand castles, like you play in the sand. And you can squish the dough in there and make different shapes out of it. But we use um, cookie cutters. Um, oh, I can use this. You can use cookie cutters if you have any like um, play, like the things that come with Play-Doh, the little cutters or the little molds that come with Play-Doh, you can use those too. All of those makes fun things to, um, to use your sand dough with. I could use this top that has a little shape on it and this mold right here that came with the, um, the I've also uh, given yeah, you, you the ability to talk to Natalie and Addison. Oh, yeah. hey Natalie. Hi, I, I play with sand. It's purple and blue. My sister plays with blue. I mostly play with purple because, well, yeah, I play with sand. And like, yeah. And it sticks together real good, so I can like, yeah, sand castles and stuff, and crabs and turtles and sea and sea sharks stars, and have two crabs and two sand and two sand castles. Have you ever made your own? No, but I. We gotta push the thing down. Okay. No, but I've, we'll I try. got, what? We'll try. <laughs> we'll try to make some. Okay, but I got purple before Christmas, and my sister got them for Christmas, and um, she got blocks, and brother got mostly baby stuff. He was a baby okay. before Christmas. Well, if you already have your own sand, we also have on there some other things you could do, some ocean-inspired snacks that we had found that sound delicious. They may look like the sand and sea, but they definitely taste better. <laughs> Addison raised her hand too. Addison? I have, oh, you have played with what? I have played with kinetic sand, but I haven't made my own sand. You haven't made your own sand. I like I like doing experiments sometimes. So um, I've made my own and I've played with the store bought. They're both fun to play with. That's true. Okay. Okay. But I never. I don't have moon sand. Well. To be honest with you, they're all very similar. Moon sand, kinetic sand, sand dough. They're just kind of different names for the same thing or different brands. What? I have kinetic sand. 
too, like for you. Oh, you do have kinetic sand? Yeah. Well, you can use that to make all kinds of things. You can make sand castles or use the cookie cutters or the lids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I added Alicia, Ingrid, and Maeve to your group. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Maeve. Y'all hold down the space bar so you can talk. How come, how come you haven't seen me on your thing? Um, you should not bring anything that's a toy except like, like beach balls, folk donuts, and things that float. No piano, uh, no toy that that can't go and like a keyboard you are correct we shouldn't take anything that um like the piano or anything that could get lost or damaged huh, at the beach um, my question was i played with sand regular sand but nothing else okay well maybe you and mom can uh take a little bit of your sand and make the magic sand. Okay, you guys ready to go on? I think we are. Is Jessica, are you still there? She's muted. I am okay. pulling up, um, I'm pulling up our song for those of us who are ready to get to sing and this time Leslie and I are going to try to take turns singing. We'll see how well that goes. <laughs> well, you have a few students who have their mics still available to them if they Ooh. want to join in, too. If that you want to be... join in singing, we would love to hear you. And for that, you might want the words. <laughs> they need. I them. am pulling up the words as we speak. I had it right here, and of course, it's never where I need it. Is it that first one to the far left? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the... <sighs> there it is. The, that little share thing is always in my way. Preserved. All right, so just to go over real quick, um, the shark, we're gonna be making the big chomping shark teeth. For the crab, we'll be pinching with our fingers. For the whale, we're gonna spout, raising our arm straight in the air to spout water out. And for our seahorse, we're gonna be jumping in our seats. Or if you're standing up, feel free to jump up and down. Oh, um. Miss <laughs> <laughs> McNeil had an ocean, ea ea and in her ocean, she had a shark, E-I-E-I-O, with a chomp, chomp here, and a chomp, chomp there, here a chomp, there a chomp, everywhere a chomp, chomp. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a crab, E-I-E-I-O, with a pinch, pinch here, and a pinch, pinch there. Here a pinch, there a pinch, everywhere a pinch, pinch. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a whale. E -I -E -I -O, e -I -E -I -O, with a spout, spout here, and a spout, spout there. Here a spout, there a spout, everywhere a spout, spout. Miss McNeil had a notion. E -I -E -I -O. Miss McNeil had an ocean. E -I -E -I -O. And in her ocean, she had a seahorse. E-I-E-I-O. 
with a jump, a jump, jump, jump here, here and, and a jump, jump, jump there. there. Here a jump, a jump here a jump, jump everywhere, everywhere a jump, jump. jump. This night Neil had an ocean. E-I-E-I-O. Great job singing, you guys. Oh my gosh, I think that's the best, um, best song we've done the whole time. I think so too. Giselle, did you have something to say? You still have your hand raised. Um, I just had a mistake. That's okay. <laughs> no problem. It happens on computers. Alicia, you still have your hand raised. How do you even make your own sand? So we um, send out a list of ingredients to the parents and with that you use, um, you take your sand and you kind of mix in water and cornstarch and your mom and dad will heat it and they stir it up and then it's ready to go. You can mix all the ingredients, but your mom or dad will need to heat it up for you, okay? Mm -hmm. How did you dye the sand, Miss Jessica? So I use gel food coloring because the liquid food coloring makes it too watery. Good to know. Okay, we've done our song. Did you guys want to talk about what tomorrow's um, extension activity is? Is that next on the list? That yes, is next on the list. And so tomorrow we actually have um, two different things you can do. One is these beautiful shell necklaces. If you would like to make a shell necklace and you don't have to make it into a necklace, you could make a, an ornament or maybe just a gift for somebody. And you don't have to use a shell either. You could use other things. You could use maybe a cool rock you found or something that you found when you were outside. Um, and you can paint these any color you want. And this is a, called a salt dough recipe kind of going with our ocean theme because one thing you find in the ocean is a lot of salt. If you've ever tasted ocean water, ooh, it's salty. And this dough, once your mom or dad puts it in the um, oven, it gets really hard. Ingrid, did you have a question, honey? No, I was telling you when in the Helen Keller story, Helen ran into the ocean and then, and then she ran back to Miss Sullivan and said, who, and then sp sign language in her hand, who put salt in the water? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good connection you made there, Ingrid, yes. And I've watched the movie. Did you like the movie? Yeah. Did she go back in the water or was she scared after that? Uh, that was the end of the story. That was the end of the story. She just ran in there and said, who put salt in the water? Yes. So, and if you don't want to make the shell necklaces, we have some other activities you could do to make um, some kind of sensory bins. Uh, if you have a big, large plastic container or storage bin or anything like that, they're fun to put some cool beachy stuff in and play. You can put sand in them. You can put water in them. Uh, different sand toys, maybe some play fish, some floating items, and just kind of have a fun time. And if you don't get around to doing the activities today or this week, just know you can do them anytime you have some free time. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Oh, Giselle, go ahead. Um, if I have, if I have no recipe to make a sand, can I please ask something? You don't have a recipe to make the sand dough? Yes. 
Oh, okay. Well, that will go out tomorrow to make the salt. I think you're talking about the salt dough or are you talking about the sand dough? Okay. The salt dough will go out tomorrow. Today you should have gotten the sand dough. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the stuff to make the sand, you can look and see there's some recipes on there. Maybe you have the stuff to make one of the sand and sea recipes. I did put the link in the chat um, to the sand and sea. If you, the one about the, the dough for um, the sand that kind of sticks together. Okay, I don't remember what your agenda was, so I have to ask you. We're, we're at the end. And it You're looks like Ingrid's, end. yeah, Ingrid's got um, hand raised as well. What would you like to add, Ingrid? Ingrid keeps saying in the chat, how old is she? But I'm not sure who she is, she is referring to. You went away, Ingrid. You got to hold the bar down. You can't just let go of it. There you go. The girl that the that said that she dyed her sand. Oh, you want to know how your teachers are. They're as old as typical teachers, but most teachers don't like to share their age. But I thought her child made it. <gasps> yeah, her daughter oh, made it. Yes. How old was your so daughter? Wait. My daughter is 14 years old, but she still loves to play with sand. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That makes more <laughs> sense. I will let all of the campers and parents know that we are working very hard on putting together our um, fall um, activities. Last spring, we did the APH Excel Academy, and we're looking forward to doing it again. So you might get a survey in the mail, in the emails, to ask what you might want for the fall, because our fall is already looking very different for so many of us. So APH wants to be able to continue to provide something that you can come to. So I am going to say thank you to Leslie and Jessica for camp this week. Look forward to the extension activity tomorrow and say goodbye for now. Bye guys. Bye guys.